So I think we're just about ready to start. Good morning to you all. I hope you had a good night's rest after yesterday's yesterday's sessions and, and evening. And maybe have had time off from the from the CD to here. Probably not, but it's a lovely weather, so it would be good for that too. Uh, we're still missing some people, but uh, just to get today's program started, we'll start with our speaker, first speaker today, and the last of our themes, which and I'd like to welcome Minna Valtari from Someco, the CEO, to, uh, to talk to you now. So please welcome Minna. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Wait a second, I'll take this one so I can speak a bit more naturally. Okay. Uh, this morning we're going to speak about social media and uh, this one. Let's begin. Okay, well, I see what. Yeah. Okay, so so I'll I'll begin by introducing myself. So I am uh, the CEO and founder of social media company called Someko. We are based here in Turku area, and uh, the ones who are from Finland, I'd like to ask who, how many. Things are that here. Okay, a couple, quite many. So, so maybe you might know us from, from from social media if you follow the Finnish social media discussions. We uh, tend to write blog posts about the, what what's happening in social media at the moment. The hashtag Somen Hermola, which kind of means uh, on top of social media kind of thing. And we produce these uh, video video news about social media. So, so that's another in English these these cases. We also have a blog in English, but it's not that active as the Finnish one. But anyhow, we are focused focused in social media, and I've been I've been working with these topics for five six years now. Uh, when I, I started back in two thousand and nine two thousand and ten, when when actually my mother needed help with. With Facebook page at work, and and when I had had been been helping her, so the first first she kind of said that that other people are also going to need help with this this tool, and and I was thinking I had been very interested in marketing communications and that kind of topics, and had been working with those, so so we started developing this business actually back then in 2012, and since then I've been I've been doing loads of trainings. Uh, but we, we mostly we, we coach the specialists in marketing and communications so that they could become better in what they do, so that they, they would know what's actually happening in social media, tracking these changes that are happening in the field. So that's kind of the topic of today also. We'll begin with kind of kind of what's happening in the field, what these all services and channels are doing, how they are being developed at this moment. And how they are be, being used, especially here, here in Finland, but also in the, in the neighboring 
area. I think the situation is quite similar. Although I'm, I'm not expert in these neighboring countries, I'm, and I'm sorry for that. So I hope that you're going to be active too. If there's something that doesn't seem like it's it's true in your own own country, and and you think there's something some differences, so I would be very happy to hear those comments. So that I encourage you to immediately when you have have something in mind and then and pose questions. So so then this morning session will be much more interesting to you also. So I'm, I'm waiting eagerly for your questions. And uh, we'll start with the question where I'll be mostly speaking. I hope you post questions too. But after that, I'll be encouraging more and more discussion. Uh, we'll go through these three uh, services that seem to be the most important ones, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We'll start with like 10, 5, 15 minutes so that I will speak about the current status of that channel. Then I'll give the word to you, and you can discuss with someone who's sitting next to you, like how you are using it, how, how your organization and how you, you busy are using these channels. And then we'll wrap it up together, go, go, go through how, how we together see that it should be in, in our cases. I hope this sounds good. And, and at this point, if you have any questions or any challenges for me, like like how, how what, is there something that you're really wondering about before I start? So raise your hand if there's something. I, I I've, I've heard some of the questions you maybe posed earlier. There were not that not that big questions. There was a bit wondering uh, uh, which channels should be used and and kind of what kind of roles different channels should be should be given. So we'll go through that at least. Okay, if no questions at this stage, we'll begin with the, with the actual state of social media at the moment. Uh, to begin with, uh, I'll go, go through this huge change of media and, and communications in general that is happening in, in, in all the countries worldwide. Uh, the, the structure of communications and, and kind of everyday knowledge about what's happening in the society has changed a lot. Uh, earlier, it was basically the media and, and those media companies that decided what our societies talked about in, in the big picture. It was their, those companies and, and those, those journalists that together decided which topics to raise and if those topics will be, will be discussed in the news, papers, in radio. But then, uh, then social media, all these channels and all the internet came in and they gave us as persons, as consumers, the uh, possibility to participate in a totally different way. Anyone can be a publisher today. Especially in our countries, I, I guess most people have internet connection, computers, at least we have we have libraries where you can use these these services. Anyone can go online and start creating content. That's the huge change that's happening, that has happened. And maybe it's on a daily basis, but that's the big thing that, that also challenges our, our companies and, and organizations. How do we participate in this content production? When the, when the status is such that, that anyone can start creating content, and if they find an audience that is interested in what, what, they, what they are writing or, or taking photos about, they will find the audience and they can spread the word. We have really problematic uh, situations when, when those people, when, when, when there's someone who seems to use kind of multiple accounts to spread their word. You know, sometimes one person can sound like there's hundreds of people who, who think, who, who have that opinion. Uh, various situations that can, can, that can happen in, in nowadays media world. But everything is based, is based on human relationships, and we have this kind of networks online. Uh, all the discussions and, and topics run from one person to another on Facebook. It's, it's totally based on the fact that we participate as, as persons. And then we can, we can be admins on a page or participate in groups. But, but we, we start by being humans there. And, uh, and all the discussions that, that we share to our friends, 
go from one person to another. And that's where our companies and our organizations should get their word. How do we get those people in those networks to talk about our topics? That's the huge change in, in communications. Already earlier, we needed to, we needed to uh, contact those journalists and get them to understand uh, that our, our topics are important. But now when we need to get those, those sp uh, spoken about, we have new possibilities. Of course, journalists are important. I, I, I would never say that they weren't. But, but the point is that we have a lot of that we can be we can be heard and noticed. We have the opportunity, but only if we are active ourselves. It is quite rare that someone who isn't kind of representing that organization would actually start sharing their information unless they are really big facts. And in this case, I don't know if you have really big facts to start spreading the word unless they are somehow related to it and they have some kind of they know that they benefit from sharing the information also so it's a big challenge if we as persons are not active if we don't publish who will spread the word no one and if no one is doing that it will seem to many people that something like this doesn't exist especially when we come to younger generations if you Google something or, or, or try to look, look for it on Facebook and you can't find, it means it doesn't exist. The, the big uh, problem is that many people do not even know, you know the where's the address line, Any, anyway, where, where you're supposed to write www.company.com. They don't know that this kind of line exists. They always go to Google and put the words, even .company.com, they put that one to the Google search always. And if Google search doesn't, hasn't indexed that page and it doesn't find, that doesn't find. So, so that's the huge challenge because the, how we act in these channels, how we use internet is changing all the time. And, and then at the same time, the same time we, we fight new new ways to, to act. Okay, let's go to the actual social media status after this introduction. Uh, these numbers now that I'm presenting come from Finland and I'd like you to reflect if it seems similar to your country. In Finland, 56% of people use one at least one social media channel. And here, social media channel is, is uh, defined so that, that you actually create an own profile with your own name and you discuss with many people. It's not only one-on-one, -on -one, but it's always kind of group, group discussions, one to many discussions. So there's a lot of channels, of course, that are included, but the, but the traditional discussions, like in Finland, Suomi, Kaksmelia, that kind of forums are not, not uh, counted in, in this survey. The, the statistics is by Statistics Finland, so, it, so it's country specific, and you can see that, uh, that of the 70 year olds, already 15% use social media. A lot. And when you come to the ones that are at their 60s, it's more than 30%. And even the youngsters, 20 year olds, we've had quite a, an increase of using social media. There have been last year. There were a lot of new a lot of new channels coming in that people got uh, engaged about, especially Instagram and WhatsApp have been growing. So I think that's why even the young ones had this kind of growth last year in the usage of social media. Is it somehow similar to your country? You can do this if you think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, quite many agree. I guess so. The, the, the point is, big picture, half the people use social media, half doesn't. So it's important that you do also other things. You can't only rely on social media, of course. The whole media, media world is kind of, uh, you, you need to use many channels to reach everyone. There is no such channel anymore that you reach anyone, everyone with one channel. 
So that's the, that's the big channel, challenge. The other thing that comes up in the same survey is the change that is happening also in, in social media world. All the time we start using mobile phones more and more. Smartphones and internet are with us all the time. 69% of carry a smartphone with them all the time so they can access the internet immediately. And even now when we go to the 70-year-olds, it's 25%. Every fourth 70-year-old already uses. So it's very, very common. And, and when we get these new, new tools, gadgets, how do, you, how do you say, anyhow, we as people, we, we start using these in new ways. The one who, who created the smartphones didn't come up with all the possible things we could do with them. But we are learning new, new things and coming up with new things all the time. Especially now when we get in those Google Glasses where you might have the notifications going on all the time. Or, or, or we have those watches where you have all the notifications coming in. Our world is changing and our ways of communication are changing when we start using new appliances. And, and that, then it's up to people to use them, them you know, <laughs> with, without problems. Because, of course, quite many people have already become kind of, kind of they have problems uh, realizing how much they actually use their smartphones. And if it's really, really that, that efficient way of working or, or living, if it's a good way of living, if you all the time look at that small screen. Especially with the young ones, can be really dependent on, on their phones, and there are a lot of problems, of course, caused by these appliances. But when we all the time get new new gadgets, we will start using them in new ways. And at the same time, what we do online is changing, and how we communicate with each other. There is another survey from Finland where they say that 50% of households have tablets. So half the Finns actually use tablets. Everyone doesn't own their own, but the households do have half of them. So that's also one thing. We sit more and more in front of the television with our tablet and discuss what's happening on television, for example. It's a totally new way of acting, of participating. And those, those various channels and various services start using these products, of course, and these, these possibilities. The big thing for organizations, when, when everyone carries their, their smartphones, if someone asks something, they expect us to answer in one hour. It can't take longer to, to give an answer. Otherwise, there's a problem. Why don't they answer? Is this something secret? You know, uh, we, are, we are used to this openness, and, and everything should be kind of online and told at the, at the moment. I think we are on live stream at the moment also. So, so everything is kind of, it's open, anyone can go see. That's, that's how today's media world, how people act nowadays and what they expect. And that, of course, it, it's, it's a challenge to, that are used to having kind of spokespersons. Like who is allowed to speak about these topics to media? It has been, and it still is, uh, clever that, that the one who speaks to media knows what they're speaking about. So they need to have all the, all the correct information, information. So it kind of can't be anyone. But on the other hand, we all expect that, that if, if we ask from someone else information about the company, the organization they work with, uh, they're supposed to be able to answer. And the answer can come from media, and, and it can be quite difficult not to answer also if you get the, the question on social media. So that's where the rules come in. Organizations need to have really good specific rules on, on how we're supposed to and how we're encouraged to use, use these channels. And if we can, can uh, react, if we can publish topics. Of course, we need to know which things actually are to be kept secret. And, and, and those things are, are then important. When, when you think about the whole whole organization's communications. Okay, now we go to Finland uh, once more and check out the studies of what which social media channels are used. 
I think that the landscape has been quite similar for like five years already. Facebook is the biggest one, and I think it will be the biggest one also in the future. Many say that that the young ones have have been have become bored uh, bored with with uh, Facebook, especially because their parents and grandparents are already there, so they don't want to share anything. So they are maybe changing to new channels. But when it comes to, to big masses, so to say, two million Finns, Finns use Facebook, and I, I think they won't quit using it quite easily. Otherwise, or, or maybe maybe they will quit if, if Facebook makes huge mistakes. But I, I don't see that kind of mistakes coming. They test and test all the time service the portal to that direction that people actually want. Uh, quite many, frankly, uh, think still that Facebook is the social media, and that's it. But we have many other cha uh, ch uh, channels. Uh, uh, let's begin with YouTube. Okay, okay, let's go back to Facebook. How many of you ask yourselves YouTube you Facebook? Almost everyone. Okay. Who has once in a, in a lifetime seen a YouTube video? Everyone has seen? Okay. Who, who acts like, like, who uses YouTube as a social media channel? Who has an account and you have commented or liked a video? Yeah, quite many. Who has published a video on YouTube? Quite many. Okay, that's like half of you. That's a lot. That's more than in, in Finland in general. <laughs> Everyone has seen a YouTube video, I think. Even my grandmother has, because I've shown her <laughs> some music, you know, some video from, from YouTube easily, even though she's like 85. But, but anyway, but we have more than 100,000 people who upload their videos also to YouTube. It's like 530,000 uh, based on this counter I'm using. And uh, that's a huge change. Last summer, this counter showed there were like 200,000. So the growth is huge in YouTube. And more and more people start sharing their videos. Well, the, the big change comes from the fact that it is easy to create videos with the help of smartphones. You can just start, start uh, recording immediately. But then, on the other hand, it has become more natural to share videos. It's not the, the, you know, the barrier has, has been lowered. It's not that difficult to be on a video, I hope, <laughs> I think. Then it's natural, and they're used to it already, especially the young ones. So YouTube is growing. The big picture, Google owns YouTube. So Google is the one big player on the internet. Facebook is the other one. And Facebook is basically one who's ruling social media. They have their own, own service, but they also own WhatsApp and Instagram, which are the, the third and fourth biggest ones. WhatsApp has grown in Finland in a very, very fast pace. Loads of people, one and a half million, already use WhatsApp. And I, I see it, it every day. My father, my uncle, who never wanted to, wanted to use, uh, use Facebook, they never signed into Facebook, even though I spoke about it quite many times, they both immediately started using WhatsApp when we created this family group. We do our cottage together and, and we forget milk. Someone can send the message to everyone at the same time. You don't have to start calling or sending SMSs and take care that everyone receives the message. It's so easy on, on WhatsApp. So they started using it. You know, I'm not the only one they message on WhatsApp, but they use it together. When, when I was at cottage with my father, he had more WhatsApp messages than I had. And I was very surprised that this is kind of crazy. He used to have opposite roles. I was more active in these channels earlier, but now it seems he has he has become more active with, with this one. Okay, he doesn't use Instagram yet, so I'm winning there. Uh, how many of you use WhatsApp? Quite a big majority. I think it comes from the kids also, because they use it so much, so quite many of us have to go after them and see what they're doing. How many of you use Instagram? Yeah, it's it, it has grown quite a lot. Also, it's also owned by Facebook. As well. uh, it's based on fo photos, and it's it's the first channel that was totally built for smartphones. WhatsApp is also built for smartphones, but 
But uh, Instagram was the first one. Well, that the channel that you only could use with mobile phone. You can you can we we find at Instagram.com what's happening, but you cannot publish anything. You can post you cannot post a photo from a browser from a computer. You have to do everything mobile. Uh, then we have the two two pressing ones, the ones that are actually important in in, in business in general, LinkedIn and Twitter. The ones that we're going to discuss also. LinkedIn is the most important one for networking, for professional online yeah. presence. That's where you create your network. You can publish, uh, discuss what's what's new in the field, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have a lot of LinkedIn users in Finland, more than seven hundred thousand now, and that kind of shows how many people also use social media in professional life lives. Maybe not million yet, but, but it's not that far away. Then many ways and many reasons for using Twitter. Uh, mostly, uh, we we talk about what's happening at this actual moment. Point of Twitter, sharing what's happening now. But then uh, we have a lot of um, kind of discussion about the what what what's what's happening in the society. Like we have this these parliamentary elections in Finland, and it's a huge topic on Twitter at the moment. We can see some statistics later about what Finns are talking about in Twitter at the moment. Uh, but then, then uh, a lot of discussion about sports, because that's something you can easily share with someone else who's interested. For example, football. When you see a match on TV and you sit alone on your sofa, you can share the thoughts you have with someone else on Twitter. And it's very, very common nowadays. Also, something happening on television, these big, big shows, those are also also often followed and, and live tweeted at the moment when they are happening. But after after, the, after that the event has kind of passed, then they won't probably continue about it. So it's really based on the time time when, when you log in, you see something that is happening at this moment. Is there one channel you think is missing from this kind of overview? Well, I was thinking about Pinterest, but yeah. it's not that uh, Well, the problem with Pinterest is that I don't have any statistics. They don't share any information. So, and, and, and actually, Twitter and Instagram don't share either, but they have been listed in this. Uh, there's, there's this statistics by Tony Numela. He's, he's created this website where he that gathers Finnish users, <laughs> so so we have those numbers. But but on Pinterest, I would say there are a couple of hundreds of thousands of users in Finland, and it's basically when you're interested in design, in food, uh, in something you would be really interested about your your very beloved topic, so to say. And and worldwide, Pinterest can drive traffic to web shops quite quite well. But otherwise, for organizations, I think it's got to find the ways that you actually can, can say that it's really beneficial to use it. So if you have very visual content, it's, it's a good place to share. Yeah? Snapchat. That's true. Snap. That's true. Also with companies and among the young ones. Snapchat is a mobile service where you share a photo and it will be deleted quite soon. I, I still don't see the point with that, <laughs> that channel, but, but I know that many young ones also use Instagram the same way. I, this one ten-year-old, he shares a lot of photos, but he only keeps four of them in his profile. He doesn't want to show everything that he's sharing. He shares first and to get likes, but then he deletes, and he, he only leaves like two, four, three, four really good photos. I've asked him why he does this. Like it's cool. I'm like, okay, you do it. It's cool. <laughs> but that's that's they they learn and come up with new ways of using this. I thought it was more cool to have a lot of photos there that are actually good, not not to have three good ones. Well, it depends on, on how you see the situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, 
it's a good way to, to have a place where you can store photos. Then Foursquare. Foursquare is like, um, I, I see, um, I'm not saying I with them, but I actually checked in for <laughs> when I came here. <laughs> so I use Foursquare. Tourism, absolutely, absolutely. When, when I go abroad to, to, or to a city, I don't know, it's very easy to check out where's the near lunch restaurant or, or something you want to go see. So then, then it's good. But I think in normal everyday lives, I don't use it that much anymore. I've also kind of, I, I think it's, 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 it's going down kind of all the time. But, but it, it's good in tourism, that's, that's very true. And when you want to find new restaurants, that's also beneficial. You see everyone else's comments and in photos. Google Plus, that's actually the one I was expecting someone will take up. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, Google tried to, to win social media war with, with Facebook, with the answer this, but, but the problem was that they never had users. Uh, worldwide, of course, there are users, but, but especially in Finland, it was like not that much, maybe thousands of people. But the point is, okay, they made everyone have an account because everyone has Gmail. But, but then no one actually was using Google Plus. So, so the, the status they have actually themselves, they have told us that they are going to plus into, into this photo service and into this Hangout service. So it won't even exist anymore in a couple of months, so um, um, I haven't listed it. We could sh say that they have loads of users because everyone is forced if they use YouTube or, or Gmail or, or any other Google service, but, but they don't actually use Google. Sorry? Skype. Skype. Yeah, you see the social media channel? Yeah? ask why is WhatsApp? Yeah. WhatsApp is because because most of the discussions are group discussions, and then then it is the same. Yeah. Well, that's true, but I don't know if people actually use it with, with many people. Do they? I do. <laughs> you do. Okay, then it could be counted in, of course. But but WhatsApp with WhatsApp, we so often use it with with kind of many people, not only with with one to one discussions. So so that's why it's being counted. Absolutely. That that was the one that based <laughs> that put the pace on on Twitter. Twitter is based on the same facts that that Irk told me was was earlier on. But these ones are the ones that are used with the big big masses, so to say. Okay, let's go forward. The big thing that I that I want to take up. I'm wondering is oh there's I keep up <laughs> with the time a bit. Uh, the big thing is that we need to become media ourselves. We need to start publishing. Otherwise, in these channels that we just went through, we won't have any content about our topics. You know, it can be any topic that you are really interested about. If you want there to be a topic, you kind of should be the one who's creating it. Otherwise, it might be that no one is putting it online. And the online word kind of seems different than the actual one. If it's that are really into Wikipedia, then we will have really bad Wikipedia content. So I think everyone should be participating, for example, in Wikipedia to, to collect the knowledge of the society, etc. Okay, but when becoming media, we, we have some challenges in our organizations. The worst uh, that I, I go through now a couple of trends that are very important in my opinion. Well, the first thing, we need to be visual nowadays. And when we speak about our topics, it can be difficult to have. But when we see, we go through a couple of channels, you see what I mean? Facebook used to look like this. You know, a lot of text, black and blue and white. Nowadays, the page is a complete, but there's a complete page. There's a cover page, profile picture, uh, cover photo, profile photo, visibility on the page. We are expected to post photos. People react to photos more than only sharing the text. When we go to Twitter, the one that is really based on text, you know, we're used to, we are supposed to use only a few in our 
in our tweets and so on. In 2012, sorry, the, the picture quality is bad, poor, but, but I didn't have a better, better, better photo from 2012. This is how Obama's tweet, Twitter looked back then. There was this uh, photo in the behind, but, but that's, that's the biggest thing with the profile photo. <coughs> then Twitter changed this cover photo the same way as on Facebook. We started to be able to share photos on Twitter. And nowadays, the cover photo is huge. It's, it goes through the whole window. And we can share multiple photos. We can share videos on Twitter. Anyone can share videos from mobile. So it's visual nowadays. If you have photos, you will be more noticed. We, we, we've had this saying in Finland that, that, that one, one photo tells more than a thousand words. And that's how it is still. So if you can put it in a photo, you will get more information shared. Of course, when you speak about organizations, one big thing that you can use are uh, infographics. You know, you can share statistics, visualize them, and show the facts that you're talking about. That will make people think more about that topic, and that will get people more interested than if you only share texts. Because the problem is, if, if, if someone works with a computer and with texts all day long, in the evening, evening when they go to social media and they get, they probably won't react. Or if they see the text on, on, on their mobile phone, it, they, they maybe don't want to read that on that small screen. So they prefer visual content and video. Video is growing in all these channels. Here are some statistics from Facebook. Last year, the, the video consumption, like they, they say, has skyrocketed. Uh, Facebook has become a video service, not, not like YouTube, but still, they had uh, more than one mil milliard uh, video views per one day already. They had this, uh, this goal fulfilled, they had, but they really want to have a lot of video views. Of course, these views multiply. They, they introduced this, this fact feature that when you download your video actually to Facebook and you don't share it from YouTube, it will be played automatically in the newsfeed when someone sees it. It doesn't mean they will look through the whole video, but it will start playing. Um, that's how we, they also had more and more video views from mobile. Most of the video views come from mobile. It's easy to watch videos on mobile. Like I just said, it's, it's much easier than reading on, on the small screen. Video is very important. If you can put your content in a video and share it, you will easily get people's attention if you can do a good video. That's, of course, the thing behind. If the three seconds are really boring, no one will continue watching. But if the three seconds take those, topic up, those topics up that they are interested in, you might get a huge audience. And also, advertising for these videos is really cheap at the moment. You get like one video view with one cent. Advertising, when you pay for it, when you pay for, for views, they will cost much more for, for views for photos and links. So video views are cheap also at the moment still. They are kind of boosting it all the time. They are boosting the companies and organizations would cheap also at the moment to, to promote those ones. Uh, here's what we are doing. We actually, two of our consultants have started doing this. So many So, so we we started last autumn. We tried to do this every week. Put those two people in front of the camera, and they would talk about what's what's hot on social media. Uh, but then we realized that once a week is a bit too often. <laughs> you know, you have to produce the video. We did it for like. 10 weeks, and they decided that we'll do it a bit, 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 bit less often. But we've been doing them more than once or twice a month still. And I think this works quite well. You always have to have some kind of a clue. But here, the point is that it's a discussion between two persons who kind of might disagree on something and, you know, give a joke in, the, in between. But it could be quite, it would be really boring if it was just me or just some, anyone alone speaking about those topics who would like to see that it's kind of 
what is she talking about? <laughs> so, so it's more interesting. You have to have some kind of clue always when, when doing these videos. And that's, of course, the problem quite often that you actually have to put quite an effort in, in, in creating video content. Also, many people have really high standards on how they should look like and speak like on those videos. So, so of course, I understand it's not the easiest, easiest thing uh, to begin with. Then another thing that is really important that already comes up with, with exactly what I just said, it, it's important that our people, the ones working for the organization, are, are engaged and that they actually want to share the topics we are, we are talking about. So every one of us, the hot topic in Finland also in, when, when, when is employer advocacy. As you say, very beautifully in Finnish. Horror word, <laughs> very long one, but but it's very important that our employee employees want to do because the point is when you are a person, and it's usually a delight to speak with a person because when when organizations go online, they have to plan, they have to be really precise. You know, it's something public they say about what's happening. And when you speak as a person, you can be a bit more personal, more personal. Uh, say it in an easier way, kind of, exact in every little aspect. So you can, can speak in a bit different way. And the problem is, um, not everyone wants to speak about their work online, of course. But, but we should encourage people. Do you think, uh, the ones who think that we have a lot of employee advocates, in our organization, which is thanks. No? No one? You think no one shares information as themselves? They don't any any they don't on Facebook? No? Yeah, that, that they might do. Yeah, that's true. But they don't share. Yeah, I understand. It's on Facebook, it can be quite it would be stupid if, if I shared every day something from my company. Everyone would be really, really irritated. But but sometimes you should do it. And Twitter and LinkedIn. It's more natural. Yeah? You could do it there. So that's the point. We need to get our people to participate in these professional channels and speak about the topics that are important to them. Their knowledge, their projects. It should be in their kind of targets to get people to know about these things they're working on. Of course, they can use kind of disclaimers. That's one way to make it easier to get people to to discuss on, online online they can say i only represent myself even though i i i and that could be good also from from a good rule from the organization also of course everyone needs to be loyal to their employer anyhow but but still this can be a good idea so i that's that's at, at least that's what the jurists say uh but i but i'm i'm thinking uh I think if, if I'm speaking or posting something online, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's instead of someone else. If it's, it's, if it's published with my face, it's me who's saying it, not any organization that I'm representing. So that's, that's the general rule, of course. But, but then we have different kind of roles, roles in the organization. So of course we have to account. Well, I think if, uh, if on Twitter you appear with your name, but uh, well, this background information who says, let's say, I'm the vice mayor of the city, blah blah blah. Yeah. Then uh, it's not like you say it's me, it's me. Yes, it's you. But at the same time, you said that you are the vice mayor for blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and that means at the same point, so you represent the city. <coughs> and uh, well, if you indicate your uh, our minister of foreign affairs, who is very active, Mr. Lekas, mm -hmm. is. Uh, Indicated that he's Minister of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. then he gets a lot of blame perhaps for something he's telling his he can tell in his personal capacity, right? I think that's that's this um, uh, the, the 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 border of where we are ourselves and where we do represent somebody else. If you do want to represent yourself with your real name and family name on Twitter, then do not indicate that you say you are, I don't know. Mom, very interesting person. Cat power. <laughs> <laughs> and well, if you want to do something and, and to tweet about your job, then I don't know. 
to another difficult file and try it. That, uh, and uh, here I am. I, I don't think it's, it has file. to be separate. I don't know. No, no, it's not. But uh, I, I think the point is if you choose to write that you are, let's say, a board member, then the people might associate your tweets when you find to go with some emotions that they might uh, associate you. Well, what's an emotional board member that they have? Yeah, that's true. Of course, you have to always, when you post something, you have to think what it says about yourself. I think quite many know that. And and, and you, you think what, what this tells about me. But the point is, I think, when we go online, it uh, represents ourselves. Uh, like like in normal life, uh, you, you don't really, or do you, separate your working life and, and, and personal life? Are you totally a different person? Really? I'm not. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I think it's it's. I think you can't really put it, compare this really like hundred percent from the like the offline world and the online world. And perhaps I guess in your case it's also different because you own your own company and it's kind of you. And it's also yeah. your. It's yeah. a different thing than I guess for the rest of us that we don't identify ourselves perhaps that strongly with our. <laughs> or something that you want to stand with your <clears throat> with your face for a whole for each organization. And and thinking about how how uh, how I use, for example, social media. I mean, we I work for the sustainable city, uh, so if we have our Facebook profile for our organization, and there we pay, post. I'm not posting the same things on that private right, Facebook. I mean, yeah, of course not. Yeah, exactly. Of course not on Facebook. Because why would I? Yeah. Why would I do that? I like some things. I'm not. I mean, not, I think I, I mean, in a way, I guess people still want to. You have a <coughs> private. Yeah, yeah. Facebook is is private for yeah. most people. No, but, but when when it comes to Twitter and, and LinkedIn, it's it's more natural to speak about because that's what you work about. Work is about. But LinkedIn, yes, because it's a professional network. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's for sure. Twitter, I'm not so sure. I think I would if I would be a mayor or something, I would have to probably choose profiles. I want to <laughs> use it for two things. Yeah. But, okay. Because I think the point, the point with Twitter in general is that that you are there as a person, and then you sometimes speak about your your interests, and then you speak about your work, and that's natural because that's how we are as persons. We do work, we do work, and then we do other stuff, and that's why you're interesting to speak with because you have other interests and you show them instead of being this work <laughs> profile. Who would want to discuss with someone? I would be really boring if I only discussed about my work. Also online, like like offline. That's my 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 viewpoint, and I know, and it can be different based on on what your status and and if you actually are really uh, into and uh, if you want to share share your work. Thing. But but then I think that this uh, communications world is going towards the, that we as persons affect the others, we are supposed to be the one who's sharing. Because no one is talking with logos. Do you do you start a discussion with a logo? No? You don't know who's behind it. It's always the person you want to discuss with. So so that's that's the big point. And if you know the person and realize that they are like fun, they like cats. So so it's maybe easier to go and talk with them with a topic actual topic and with the stuff they do at work because you know they're like cats because they shared that on their profile so that's kind of that's a point i hope you can see it yeah yeah just a thought even though you are maybe talking from a sort of a, an organizational profile be like uh more less 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 formal uh more a person <coughs> there are ways of doing it of talking from like a, an organizational point of view but still being a person online talking to yeah, yeah so that's true maybe. One, one view to that as well. That's true, and, and one thing that, that you can do with your profile is you can you can put your name after the message, like who is it that, that is actually sharing the, the information, so that it can be a bit more uh, personal than it's it's only a logo who's, who's kind of posting. Sometimes those, uh, the, uh, the other thought is that persons who uh, go very formal with uh, their Accounts in Twitter, they're getting too boring because they do not um, post.
messages from the self. They only repeat something or quote something. And at, uh, at some point, I find those profiles very, very boring. And in the person of, is sort of afraid of even one personal message? I mean, personal, not of like cat message, but <laughs> to say something from about the opinion because they are the thing it may, you know, someone might, might not like it. Even, even a formal opinion of what I think about the policy or what I think about that. Uh, that they, the only stuff they do, they repeat something uh, which in regards to the city, for example. And uh, I should tell you a few, in, few of my colleagues which I see them follow because I, from the local news, or from the official city website. Why should I read the same in the repeat option all the time? Yeah, that's true. But there's this point that if, if the city shares something and the others retweet, it will be shown to much to a much larger audience. So so there's points. It's very beneficial for the organization that they share. But but I know that from your point of view it's not then a good way of getting information. At least I think when when you share the organization's message as yourself, you should put it in other words. And you know somehow somehow take it That's to a personal level. Exactly. Yeah. Put some uh, some personal Note what's what's the thing yeah, that you are why you're sharing it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's not That's like we all come to you know get by and visit but let's do okay guys listen we're gonna have great event. Exactly. Time. So it's another thing already. If you're organizing it and, and you want to invite people mm -hmm. so you can say welcome. I yeah. think to 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 choose and not I'm not I'm not the right person to be I would love my colleagues from the <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but this is the problem we, we're talking about. We share, we all, our kind of different kind of online lives are, are colliding. Uh, we have online presence that is ourselves, then, then it's work, then there's professional. So we have these, these different roles and, and it's a mix and match always. And it depends on your role and, and, and how you want to participate in this. In these contexts. Okay, one thing that is changing a lot is internal communications in our organizations. Do you still use Facebook intern? Uh, sorry, Facebook. I mean email internally. Do you send a lot of emails to your colleagues? Yeah, I don't. I hate it. <laughs> I have so many emails from others. Then if I already had like hundreds of emails from, from my coworkers, I would be dying with my emails. Because you still get hundreds of them daily. So so we changed the way of acting. We have, have moved all that internal communications to, to Yamme, you know, the channel. Uh, it's a good way to enhance information flow, like how everyone who's affected in that project gets the knowledge at the same time. And you can kind of gather all the knowledge of this one specific project to one group. So you always you know, have the, the latest version of those Word files and Excel files. Even though someone has edited, they, they save it to the same place. And even though it's, it's different organizations that we work with, we can always be up to date with everything. And it, it, it makes it so much easier. We already, all, all, I mean, all, always, when we work with our clients and we kind of share content plans or something, calendars, what, what is being posted and when. So we, we all have like say, same editing uh, permissions. We can all reach the latest version of the calendar always and, and can make changes. And anyone, everyone else gets a notification when someone makes a change. So it's not only an Excel file on the computer that will be 10 be sent to 10 persons and, and then they will never find the, the latest version because they have various email kind of uh, topics on the same topic and they will never find the actual file they were looking for. So I think this makes a lot of things easier. You can edit the same files at the same time, etc, etc. So Yammer is the one that actually quite many organizations use. Do you? Have you ever? No? Yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? My feeling about it is that it was um, was becoming quite popular in yeah. organizations and so on, but then it somehow didn't. <laughs> That's yeah. my feeling about it. I know the city of Porto tried to use Yammer, yeah. and then it just died. The point is that it's kind of, you know, it's it's one additional place to be on. 
I know, uh, I know that that pain, but it eases your email. So this is an excuse big enough for me. <laughs> Sorry. Legal issues connected to using of external uh, programs. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yammer is one of those that you actually can trust, and it's a Microsoft device. So if you're able to use kind of, no, you don't have an internet. Yeah, That's yeah. based on the same facts because that kind of, you know, you know, this one is is something you can trust because the next one I'm going to show you probably I think most IT uh, persons wouldn't agree using Facebook at work. Did you did you hear that it's coming? Facebook is creating their own own. Yammer kind of that when you go in into Facebook you can go like your name and change if you are there as yourself or as your or professional person So so organizations can create their internal communications social internal social media kind of at Facebook. So you can you can be as yourself, but then change to another profile where you have totally different photos and texts and where your posts will only go to your own on co-workers in our company. So uh, this is very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see, but basically if, if you if you think about people who do not work with computers all the time, how can you use any internal like internet with them? Because they don't use computers. And that's very many of the people who are also used at the municipalities, I think. There's also this kind of people working. So with Facebook at work, it could be very easy to learn people to use this kind of network internally that you can share the the actual knowledge what's happening inside the organization because every every okay, two million things so it's a lot of things uh, so many use Facebook so it could be easier to you know just change to your work Facebook but we'll see uh, this is now tested uh, on, on the bigger bigger companies in in US and it will be roll, rolled out to us later on this year, so so we'll see what happens. But this is one thing that is coming, and and I think some kind of solution is is coming sooner or later because because those email emails have huge problems. I think so. So I don't know if Yammer is is optimal. There might be a new solution coming later on. Later on, that will be much better. But 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 this change is happening already uh, with small steps, of course. Uh, that's how, how Facebook at work could look like. It's kind of here where your name is, you change to your different profile. And then you have, have the company logo on the on the on the on the profile and then it looks exactly like your normal Facebook, but it's only of your work. It's a good idea from Facebook. They will keep expanding to new fields all the time. That's that's their strategy, we can see that. One more thing up is, is measuring what happens online. It's really effective and that's what organizations do a lot. Uh, you can see how many people have seen your messages and, and that's good because they know if it's beneficial or not. So should you do something, enhance the, the engagement and, and reach of your posts. Of course Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all these channels offer advertising to reach people. But one more kind of natural way of reaching more people is getting your own people to share. Especially now what we're LinkedIn like we just discussed. Uh, the things that are mostly uh, measured, visibility, engagement and website traffic. Uh, the point is engagement is, I think it's more important in Facebook than only visibility. Because visibility can be something that you really don't react at all. To that post but when you actually get engaged that we always try to do when we share something we try to get someone engaged so that they would like com comment or share on what we what we are sharing posting and the point is you should automate messages you should be present and, and try to take up those discussions and then you need to be there more as yourself and as the company or the organization representing Okay, so I want to say that, that this all, we talk, all we're talking about enables new way of, of communications. So we have a lot of possibilities. 
And now we're going to especially Facebook. I think we will have coffee soon, but but it's not yet. So we'll we'll continue with Facebook a moment, and then we'll get a cup of coffees and and start discussing discussing about Facebook. Okay, now I can see they're coming. So in a while. <laughs> Yeah, so what happens on Facebook? Well, the basics I already uh, mentioned. So we always use Facebook as ourselves. And then we, we, we can be active with our friends, with, with anyone we friend on Facebook, or we find in the, sa in the same groups. Uh, but then when we work as, as organizations, then we always use pages when we try to do something externally. We can, of course, create a group that is kind of internal, where we share messages uh, in Turku, the, the Visit Turku tourism uh, sector, they have created this Facebook group for, for tourism professionals in Finland who are interested in, in what happens in Turku and what Visit Turku serves. So that they're there, they share all this information as, as themselves, as persons using Facebook, on act as, as a page. So groups are always for, for persons, for people. And pages come up when when you do kind of external. You want to reach a bigger like, audience. The big thing to understand about Facebook, and and the thing that I want to take up now, that's actually the only big thing that I'm taking up, is that that having a lot of fans doesn't mean mean that you're successful, because fans do not mean anything at today's today's Facebook. Because it is, it is good to have numbers, but another thing is how many of those people actually see the posts, that newsfeed algorithm. That's what I'm going to talk about. It sounds awful, but anyhow, Facebook isn't a similar channel it used to be. Uh, it used to be really open in the beginning. It was a great place to find something cool and interesting. I, I, I remember, the, remember the feeling when you're kind of surfing and you find like, wow, such a great thing. But nowadays, always when you find something, it says it's sponsored. So it's not really finding anything if someone is advertising to you. It's not finding that much anymore. But the point is, uh, we get everyone gets a lot of uh, a, a lot like 1,500 posts per day as Facebook users. That's, they, they say that's an average. 1,500 messages a day. So they have created this algorithm that reduces the amount that is shown to us. That's kind of the basics. Let's go back. I had these wrong, wrong uh, number. Anyhow, uh, the point is for organizations and, and, and companies on these pages, it is more difficult now because Facebook is doing this this ranking, which post should be you, uh, shown to which user. Uh, it's more and more difficult to get the free visibility. So what they did, in the beginning, they created pages, and they told all the companies and brands that it, now it's very easy to find uh, and, and, and share to people. And you get a huge audience. And their point was, pay us to have more followers, to have more likes on your page. But then, you know, when Coca-Cola already had millions and, and millions of, of fans, they realized it's enough. We don't need more. We just want to engage with these people all the time. And they realized, haha, let's not show all the, all the posts to all those people, but you have to pay to reach all of them. So they had a new way of getting money. That's, that's a huge global company that is trying to earn more money. So that's what they did. They, they made it more difficult to reach the people that are fans. Uh, today's uh, today's uh, kind of you know, world, we, we speak that the one page, even though you don't like, you usually reach 100 or 200 people with one post. It can be post isn't good if it's not important. If, if the algorithm sees this is not something that people want to see, they never react to this kind of content. We won't waste it. So that's the big issue with Facebook. The same thing isn't happening on Twitter or LinkedIn, but, but it, this is happening in Facebook. So, so they are all the time trying to decide which posts should be used. You know, always when we as persons 
log into Facebook, there are two kinds of auctions happening. The first auction, what kind of content should be shown if there's 300 or 1,500 or even more posts coming up, which ones will be on the newsfeed? They are not there like in, in timely, timely uh, but by the time, time when they were posted. But, but it's, it's always optimized for that person on that, that gadget. If, if you use it with a browser or with another browser or with a tablet or mobile phone, you will have different news feeds. You probably have noticed that you have really different kind of things on different uh, gadgets because they try to make it as good for you as, as possible. That we want to make news feed to show people the things they want to see. But you know, it kind of makes it seem less interesting because you only show people what they kind of are supposed to be interested about. So the new things that could actually be interesting are never shown to you anymore on Facebook. So that's why Twitter is good. You, you're not getting kind of something that someone supposes you're interested about, but you get everything you want to see from the people you want to follow and the companies you want to follow. But this, this is how life is on Facebook and still it's the most used one. This is something that most people do not understand about Facebook. And, and I think media has not been able to tell this to, to everyone because this is something that could actually make people angry. True? I think so. Because they kind of, they limit what you're able to see. But of course, you can affect this even yourself. You always, when you see a post, there's this uh, possibility to go and click and I don't want to see this. They, they react to this all the time. They also react to the fact that if, if you like, you think that one is never posting on Facebook, and then you search for her and go to the profile, and you go and like a couple of photos, next week you will see only her <laughs> updates, her, her posts. So that's, that's how it works. It reacts to what you're doing. If you always interact with someone, you will get the posts from them. And from that page, you interact with <coughs> But if you never act with a page, you will never see anything. Because Facebook thinks it's not interesting to you. So it's kind of up to ourselves also. also. But they all, all the time kind of make it more complex, this algorithm. Uh, I'll show this photo, how it has been pictured earlier. It was called Edge Rank, but they took the term away. But anyhow, this is how it has been defined, which things as your content to this algorithm so that it would be shown to more people. The three things that are kind of weighted, affinity score, weight, and time. Affinity score easily means if that fan or those fans are reacting to the page. If no one ever likes, you will get points for having a lot of fans who react. So in this sense, it's kind of important that the people working at the company also sometimes or an organization or sometimes, sometimes like or click those links. That also matters, not only publicly uh, liking or commenting, also clicking links and opening photos matters. So if we do that, our posts in general will get more visibility. Another thing that matters is kind of weight. What kind of post you're posting and if your audience is reacting to that kind of posts. So if you only share the uh, getting that much reach. But if you have a photo or video that happens nowadays, you will get more visibility. Especially the video can go really viral at the moment because they really want to push with more and more video. They want to win YouTube. That's the Google, that's a big thing. And the third thing, timing. If you share when the people who like your page are online, you will reach them easier. The point is, if you share at, at 8 in the morning and the person you want to reach online to Facebook at 5 p.m., they have, like, you know, how many posts coming, coming up during the day. But if you share then quarter past five, when the person have, has logged in 15 minutes earlier, they already had, you know, the huge ranking of which posts should be shown. But then, you know, the ones that are published at the moment they are there might be shown 
because you won't go back, uh, you know, earlier to the newsfeed. But the ones that are now live could be in more interesting. So you know, you have to think about the audience when you're sharing on your page. Is it something that people want to see during the day? Is it people who use Facebook at work you're sharing to, or are they using Facebook only in the evening? So is it the citizens you are re trying to reach, or the professionals? That's the big question. And also, you know, for everyone working with this topic or, or posting to Facebook at work, that's a, a, quite a problem if you're trying to uh, reach normal people because they usually are online at nine in the evening or Saturdays and Sundays. So that's when I should work <laughs> all the time. That's a bit problematic. Oh wait, because okay, we have timing. We can we can time our publish our, our post automatically later and uh, but but then if we ask something we, we should be answering it doesn't it seems kind of stupid if we if we share posts but then we don't answer if someone immediately asks something so there are these kind of issues then with if, if you start publishing publishing when you actually aren't working so so there's a lot of issues with this but now you know what's what's this algorithm and what it does to Facebook and how it makes makes presence on Facebook a bit more complicated than, than we usually think it is. So let's use like minutes. First, we get a cup of coffee, and then discuss with the people around you how are you using Facebook, and how is your own organization using Facebook, and how Union of Baltic Cities should be using Facebook. And and at half past ten, let's speak together what we think about this. famous person, President of Finland, the winner of Nobel Peace Prize, Mr. Martti Ahtisar is having lunch today behind us in the cabinet. So you might actually see him downstairs when you move in or somewhere. Now we have the screens here because they don't want to disturb us. That's the that's why we have the screen. So it's not like we're disturbing them, but they don't want to disturb us. So he's here, if I remember correctly, with the Namibian president or, or something like that. So don't be surprised if you see Marti Ahtisari somewhere.
Should we wrap it up a little? What, what thoughts have you? Let's let's start from there. Can one of you tell tell us what you talked about? How is Facebook used? Yeah. Um, I talked a little bit about Facebook could be used in many ways. It could be used like one way of communication, like a channel, but it could also be used as a working tool. Uh, in different groups and so on, in terms of where uh, the discussion said that uh, also something uh, I, could some, I could sometimes feel that we talk a little bit too much about the channels and too little about the purpose or the message. I think should we as a municipality try to reach out just because of or what is the message we want to bring forward? And sometimes, I mean, I was going to have a, a Instagram. Uh, page where it's only about spreading a positive picture about the city. There's no message from us at all to show other people in the city that uh, actually it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's maybe more about brand building in that sense too. Like some, some function in it can be just brand building, getting a positive image out of your organization for you see someone. Absolutely. Did you have any thoughts how, how Union of Baltic Cities should be using Facebook? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can continue later. Yeah, yeah, yeah later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll continue with with kind of Twitter dis Twitter discussion later. So so you can keep on then. Okay. Any other comments? What did the other groups discuss? Uh, yeah. So I think one challenge that I'm wondering that other person also to focus on Facebook is to really start this kind of dialogue. And really in our commission and the city's commission, I think we after we have started our session, and in the beginning we actually were struggling to post regularly. I mean that's it's been hard and I can't find some kind of rhythm that we actually post and I think nowadays we actually the frequency is quite okay, but it's still we use it mainly for announcing something or sharing something or yeah, sharing links. And it's really, I mean, sometimes we try to, I don't know, ask, get some reaction, but this is very difficult. And we have very, we, we practically have no comments ever. We get likes, and on some posts we get even more likes in our, in our uh, answers. But this kind of a dialogue thing is, is, is really. I don't know if there are other 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 no matter is it positive or negative, there's always some kind of discussion. And uh, actually, people are like, pointing out the uh, problems in the city that we are facing and, and how can we you know, start with this stuff and have any opinions. So, actually, it's more active and useful than our city's official group page, which is actually quite good. But uh, maybe there's like uh, this negative thing is always so consistent, then it shatters the positive thing. Point that we try to focus the positive people saying it's not that bad at all. <laughs> so it actually is very good to see the discussion, and no matter how much we could focus in, in other channels, just uh, Okay. Yeah, well, that, that's a very common thing that, that you get more negative feedback than positive feedback. People usually start start being quite emotional when something is wrong, you know, but, uh, but, but it's, it's, it takes, you have, to, you have to be really happy with something to give positivity, isn't it? So, so, so that's what we do ourselves. We, we kind of present positive content, we share great photos and, and then get people to share and, and like, and that's how we get the positive. But, but, but I, I, I understand the case, case that you get negative feedback because that's, that's how it goes. But, when you get the feedback and can react, it usually helps at least a little that, that you forward it, it further on and so on. I think for cities to use Facebook, it's really easy because the pe people living in that city are interested in what happens. And usually, 
quite many are proud of where they li live. It's, it's sad if they aren't, but quite many are. So they like to follow that page and, and, and share and, and react. But then this is also one way of, of kind of building that, that proudness, like, like that we want to share things about our, our city and, and they are helping us to be proud of our city. So, so that kind of attitude you can also have, like try to create cool content that people will be happy about. So the way this is very nice because people can so people know that things happen Exactly. the first place it wouldn't seem like we have this news, the most every day, yeah. and as we're about to do. Yeah, and in the end you have more than <laughs> that's how it goes. And it's a good idea. I, I don't know how much Sara yesterday told you about what we've been doing with, with uh, Turku, the city of Turku. But they, for example, they have this Excel sheet, which is kind of, they collect from all the of the city, all the content, all the events that are coming up. And, and they list it together once per month, go through what's happening in the city and have like this list and go through it uh, together. And that's kind of the basics for what they, what content they produce for website, what they produce for Facebook, what for Instagram. And, and, and you know, you have the list and all the topics coming up. So it makes it, you know, you don't have to think every day, like, what am I going to post about today? But you have the plan that it's going to be about this and it's going to be done by that person. So it makes it, you know, it's always when, when you plan, it's easier. Yeah, and we just have the problem that there are small towns. And there's no basically no people to do it because the staff is limited and you really need to have someone to look after it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the problem is that there's not so many events. Oh, so then what should they do? The actors is saying, yep yeah, that's that's true it's it's more difficult when when it's a smaller one that's how it goes but then then you have to adapt to what's special to that place and, and I think then uh, the the ones living in the city should be kind of engaged as much as possible that they they can come and, and create content together it's always very 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 great if you can do that you can able to post photos with with specific hashtags to your page or or, or however to create activity from the users. But then uh, I have to say about Facebook, I hope everyone knows that those competitions that you can like and share and, and participate in a competition are not allowed by Facebook page rules. You can, you can have a competition and ask people to like or comment, but not to share. Because everything has to happen on the page, not on personal profiles on Facebook. So, so that's one thing you should always take into account. No share. It, you can't say do as as they say Finnish. You only can like and and comment, and then it's okay. Or then you can can build more advanced competition, of course, via websites or or different kind of tabs that you have on Facebook as well. Okay. Anything else on Facebook at this moment? Okay, let's go forward to Twitter so that we will finish in time also. I have a couple of slides of Twitter at this point and then you can keep on discussing again. Okay? First thing, what do we use Twitter for? We share information, we get knowledge from what's happening at this moment in our cities, for example. We know what's, we can kind of, we don't know everything. We can make lists but we don't know still everything so we can follow uh, what, what happens online and, and what is being discussed at this moment. We can build relationships with, with our um, partners, with the other, other for example, citizens. What, what is the end user of the information always? So, so there's a lot of possibilities on Twitter. Uh, worldwide, loads, loads of users. And, and there are loads of today. In Finland, in, in the earlier statistics, I showed you there were around 600,000 users on Twitter. But this is the actual fact. You have 300,000 active ones. The ones who post themselves, 3,000, 300,000. Uh, but you have double as many 
who never have posted as themselves, who only follow. Okay, who uses Twitter? I already asked earlier, but who is active posting as themselves? Okay, is there someone who only follows? It's quite quite typical. You follow news or, or specific specific people you want to follow. So, so and it's a good way to following news also because you know many many newspapers have these pay, payment walls. So always when you go with a link from Twitter, you don't have to pay. So that's what people also use Twitter for. So it's multiple reasons. But but anyhow, we have three hundred thousand Twitter users in Finland that are active, and here we have this this nice and. Um, overview of what has been talked in the last seven days. We have Bali 2015, which is the elections. Every day has been the most most active topic and it's not a problem it, not a not a big big uh, issue. It's it's a huge issue at the moment so no wonder it's so uh, so popular at the moment since we have the elections on, on Sunday. But then a lot of related Liga you can see league in, in English. So so and, and there's a lot of names for these different different sports teams. But then we also have Tahdet Tahdet, which is a TV show. Uh, we have Di Digitalist, which is thinking about digitalization. So that's one one topic. Um, we have separate uh, parties. For elections, running for elections. So, so those are the most active topics at this moment in Finland. I don't know if you have in, in other countries, but this is this is very cool because you can really follow what's what's happening in the big picture in, in Finnish Finnish Twitter. Um, the basic point with Twitter and those hashtags. I don't know if, if everyone is is familiar, so I, I'll 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 think take this up because the basis of of Twitter, otherwise you couldn't be able to, wouldn't be able to to discuss with the people that are interested in the same topics. So, so Twitter is is basically open and public. You can find anyone and discuss with with anyone who is is on Twitter. On Facebook, we always are friends with people, but on on Twitter, we follow, and you don't have to follow back. It doesn't have to be mutual. So, so you can just follow someone if you're interested, and, and if they follow you, it's it's up to them. Then, in the end, quite often people think that it's kind of polite to to follow back. So, so many people do, but you don't have to. That's that's the the how 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 this channel works. Um, there are only one kind of account, so this uh, Twitter doesn't work like Facebook. In Facebook, you always, but on Twitter, you always. Uh, Log into an account, so it's either your account or a company's account, and it's kind of based on the email address you're using. The messages, tweets are really short, maximum 140 characters, uh, and you usually have a link or the hashtag in read more and, and keep on discussing, or or then to be able to categorize those messages you are sharing. And hashtag is the big thing that Twitter invented, and it has been taking on to other channels. Facebook is even hashtags nowadays. The problems, problem of, of using hashtags on Facebook is that most people still, even though if, even if they, they used hashtags, they would probably post it privately. So you won't see, when you click on a hashtag, you don't see that many posts because people haven't made any public posts. Because the point is to to discuss with people you already know. That's Facebook. On Twitter, you discuss with people who are interested in the same topics. And that's why that's why it's it's really interesting. That's why you can uh, participate in the in the discussion in, in your field or or in the society in general. Which hashtags do you follow? What's for using? I actually follow the events, such as bigger events, like general or Swift ads or something like that. Then there's general, yeah. Or the professional events. Yeah. Yeah. Events. Use. Anyone following communications in general or, or your own city with hashtags? I follow Turku a lot. 
what happens here. You know, you see what people say and what's happening. There's a lot of messages from the actual, like the, the, the official account, but also a lot of discussion of the local people, from the local people. The problem with the hashtag Turku is that, you know, in Turkish, it seems to me one tur Turkish person is, is called Turku. <laughs> so, so, you know, when you, when you, when you search, uh, you have to kind of make, make, make this limitation that you want the Finnish speaking to it, because it's messy. <laughs> But when you use TweetDeck, I don't know if you know TweetDeck, but it's a very handy tool for following hashtags. You can use it, it's, it's totally free. It's owned by, it used to be an, a separate company, but they bought it because it was a great way to use Twitter. You can, you can admin various accounts. For example, if you have your personal and, and the professional account or, or the company you're tweeting as. So, so it makes it easier. There you can also use timing. And additionally, you can create your own kind of separate news feed for separate topics, a way of using Twitter anyhow. I, I for example, I, I follow what's happening, what, what people are discussing about social media in Finland. So we have this Tomefi, that how, how you say. In English, you don't uh, shorten the word social media as some, but in Finnish we do. So so that's that's for example what, what I follow. And and, and marketing and communications, all those Finnish words, but also some international ones to, to keep up with what's happening in this field. And that's the most important source of, of kind of professional information for me. And I think it's for many others too, because it's so easy to know what's happening now and what news are coming. Here we can see some Finnish public organizations using Twitter, you know, with the logo, with, with some not so personal information always. Rakennus Virasto, the one with the owl in the corner, they have been very brave in Finland. They are really controversial on Twitter, but as they say, it's, it's from the city in the, in the uh, capital. The point is, when they have been even rewarded that they have been doing this very well. Uh, but the point is what they said, that they were so down and so not appreciated that they could do anything and it wouldn't be worse. <laughs> So, so they started being really controversial, and and they were like posting stupid jokes and and but but everything is somehow still related their organization and and to the work they are actually doing. So so they have gathered a lot of followers. They they share information, but it's always with a joke, and and it's a. I th I wouldn't recommend this to anyone who is in that low, you know, in the beginning. Uh, because it's difficult if, if you try to make four or even ten people, ten persons to act and to be able, etc., etc. It's difficult. You can't make a city sound like that, I think, but or any any public organization shouldn't do that. But but it's one one example of of being of how being brave can raise awareness and um, and make the organization even look better. So that that was their case. But in general, if you look at these ones. I already said what I was going to say at this point. But anyhow, would you use these accounts? That's the big question. These, usually these posts what, what, post what's happening. It's some kind of news feed they're posting. And then when you get, oh, put your pause instead. <laughs> yeah. When you get the people working at these organizations, these are some leaders from these actual, the same company, or organizations, public organizations. When you get them online, it might be much more interesting. For example, Pekka Sauri, he's, he's showing a huge example in Finland, the vice major, mayor of, of Helsinki. He has more than 30,000 tweets, 27,000 followers. That's a lot in Finland. Okay, our Prime Minister has a lot more since he's so active. But anyhow, he's been doing a huge favor. But he has been already earlier very active in the media and it kind of suits his personality. So that's how it works. But but that's that's of course what the city should have. Someone who's really active in and participating. And all the organizations. And if you have the face, it's much easier to, to ask a question or, or start discussing. Here, why? Who do you discuss with? 
So let's have five color using now and let's rub it up like in five ten minutes. <laughs>
Should it be used? General comments? You have a good what you've been talking. <laughs> Okay, so no personal use at this point. Okay. Um, I just think that I like, like, we also um, you get so much information from everywhere all the time. I don't, I, I can't get any more. <laughs> 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 I think that's. Uh, I understand that pain. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> Basically, we, we, we can't, there will always be a lot of different social media. Now it's Facebook, Twitter, and whatever. That's true. Five years, it's something else. Or there are four more or ten more we have to. So we will always have to, to agree or decide on. How to use? Yeah, yeah. Which one you should use? You shouldn't use all of them. I'm, I totally agree. Well, it depends on. Yeah, it depends you on your target. There's a target group that exactly. only uses Twitter, and mm -hmm. if you want to meet them, you have to. Use Twitter, as That's true. Says. That's There's true. A target group using only WhatsApp or whatever yep. other. That's true. Media. So, so as an organization, we should use all of them, more or less, mm -hmm. if we want to reach out to everybody. Exactly. But Discussion is to whom are we trying to reach out? Yeah. Who would you reach in Twitter? Twitter? What would be, be the most important target group? Is it the Can most important that, that is the most important? Or, or who is the most important? Because, yeah. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. I think quite many organizations think it's media yeah, and journalists. Is it the city mayors? Is it Good question. But I think with Twitter, quite many think that one of the most important target groups are journalists because they are very active on Twitter and they, you know, come up with new ideas for their stories and their articles from Twitter. So that's a good way of interacting with them. So that's one one reason why all quite many use it. For for real, quite many say that that's the only re reason that they don't really think that you can reach a big audience, but you have the media. Yeah. That is active and some influencers that might share the message in, in other channels also. But it depends on the targets. Other comments? On Twitter? Any active user who wants to say that it's really good and everyone should be online? Now? <laughs> Then I can think about Estonia and considering that our prime minister and our president are actually more popular in the Twitter world than any other official accounts in Estonia and the official exactly. And I think it's not bad. The same thing in Finland, I think. Yeah, yeah, they get quite personal and they get a lot of posts. And if you have working like that, I should say in Latvia, we have just the statistics. That's very good. So you can actually have benefits from Twitter. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I, I, I think definitely you can, but we also discussed on this 
it's almost on the first. If you have a president, True. if you have a president, then you easily that would love to tweet, and then it's easy to kind of decide. But if you don't have that, um, I think it's then worse to kind of kind of try to force it than perhaps just leave it. And that's what's another thing that perhaps for us working as an organization, we also need to see which other channels that work for us, which are the ones that we that we use, and we don't have to be on everything. That's true. I mean, That's for true. our commission, we realized that I mean, we use Twitter when we are on events, mm -hmm. um, and we use I mean, but actually that's the only and then we have it connected to Facebook. So if we post something on Facebook, we also post on Twitter. But otherwise, we don't tweet because it's not somehow it doesn't also fit our. <laughs> it just doesn't. Happen. Okay. Okay. And if one of us in the office would be uh, probably also president, like, very well. It's, it, I think if, if, it, if you're also not this type that where it's like. We just thought that some people have it also that they can you can um, express yourself really well in 140 sides. You know, That's true. Them. It's it's about some skills and you know wittiness and, and all all of that. If it's easier for you, okay. yeah. I, I think I, I understand the belief that just because social media is of course really important, but not every organization needs to be on all channels. And also regarding how much time it takes to actually take care of all the social media channels, that should not be underestimated. It's perhaps better to. So yeah, yeah, right. you have to choose. But then, then on the other hand, also, if you automate from Facebook, everyone's going to hate you on Twitter. It won't even follow you because it's only a Facebook feed. Why would you want to have links to Facebook on Twitter? Because quite many Twitter users hate Facebook. They have Twitter because they hate Facebook. So, you know, That's there's always. It's just like how you connect the social media. <clears throat> you kind of have to have a feed in everywhere without that. You have to post in, in different channels. I'm not doing that well, but I mean, that's like the only thing that goes out on Twitter. Which is just, of course, not. Yeah. But the point is, you can copy paste and make it a bit shorter than it fits Twitter. It takes one bit when you post to Facebook. It's, it's done in the same time, so I would recommend because that probably would give you feedback that might make you, make you think that it would be wiser to use it more because people might really automate your post from Facebook. And doesn't one thing that you can automate and I think works really well is, for example, if you have an RSS feed on your on your page, you have news articles coming up. You can automate them because because usually you can then make the the automate work so that that it takes the title and maybe a hashtag and the link and the title more than 140 characters. It shouldn't be <laughs> in general. And that will make your titles even better if you if you start focusing on that they can't be that that long. So so that's a good thing. Then you don't have to go and tweet it yourself, but you can make make this thing to to make it check out once in a, in an hour if there's something new in this feed. So that's one thing you can automate. Because then it's 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 still a tweet. It's not a link to Facebook. For example. Okay. Anything else from two? I have to add one thing. I think Sweden is doing quite well on Twitter. In the in the, I think it's even visit Sweden's accounts because every week there's a new Swede posting on the at Sweden account. So anyone can say anything about the country on that account. Who wants to be the next one? It works really well. It has been working for like two or three years already. And it has a lot of followers because people are kind of following what's happening in Sweden and what kind of people live there. And it's one good way of, of coming up. If if you're if you don't have time, you can take someone else to do it. Also in Instagram, you can give 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 a possibility for someone else to, especially when it comes to the city, it's easier than when it comes to, for example, you can see it's it's um, but much more, more difficult than okay. yes. Um what would you say? Would it be beneficial and worthwhile for an organization to be on Twitter even if we don't have those spaces, those people from our organization in their own name? I mean, UBC is not in Twitter at the moment, Sustainable Commission is. But um, so I'm just saying that should, should we, in that yes. sense, even though we don't have those spaces? Yeah, you should Twitter. still, because otherwise there's no information. But first, you start with that account, and when you come to the next phase, you hopefully get someone to do it personally. Also, if you get engaged and, and realize that it could be beneficial, yeah, 
You had a quote about uh, okay. <laughs> there were two. <laughs> no problem. Uh, when we have these people in a corporate business network and just recently you know cash that as a really see. So you don't have to have like official account then. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. That's true. But but on the articles you have on the website, then you should. Just one note with you, yeah. this is hashtag is gets constricted with the University of British Columbia. Exactly. Yeah, it's just <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> you should come up with something else, some another kind of hashtag. Yep. And a comment to that, it's really important to always check when you're choosing a hashtag that is not, not actually in use somewhere. Because we well, not us but uh, other organization who was organizing the uh, strategy for the Baltic Sea region last year, the BDF, they chose a hashtag for the event, which actually led to a beer festival in America. <laughs> but luckily, our, our uh, specialist in, in Sida Turku catch, caught that. So he saw that. Okay, he texted. He said, oh my god, this leads to a beer festival. So we had time to change that. But that just proves how important it is actually to so check that. <laughs> Absolutely. And often when you have like a couple of letters and numbers, 2018, that's what people often use, then it usually has been used somewhere. Not, not in January, but in December will have been used already. So, so it's good to check out. Now, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think usually, usually cities and, and public organizations do not follow back anyone. And people are kind of irritated that they don't follow anyone. How, how, how can you use Twitter and not follow anyone? Because that's kind of the point of using Twitter. So, so most people, when, when this kind of organization follows, they're like, wow, they want to follow me. But of course, then some, some else do think that, that it's kind of watching after. So, but you can, for example, your country, if you don't want us to follow you, kind of if you hear that kind of comments. On the other hand, I, I think it's really great if you do follow. Because it gave, gives many people the, the thing that, that they want to know what you're talking about them, and, and, and it's important to their account. Other comments or opinions on this one? Someone else? Yeah. How well are you able to follow your users? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But for example, I don't follow newsfeed at all. I follow the hashtags that I'm interested in, the topics that I want to discuss about, basically. I, I sometimes, you know, on a Friday evening when, when I'm bored at home, alone, if I am, <laughs> or, or some other evening, I might start going to the newsfeed. But usually I go to those hashtags on, on my tweet deck and check out what people are talking about, those things that are important to me. Or if, if someone has, has, has tagged me in, in a discussion and, and want to hear my opinion in something. So of course I, I discuss those topics then, but an answer is someone asks something. But usually it's based on topics, not on the new feed only. And uh, how do you suggest how often we as an organization should put tweets uh, to the um, You can tweet as often as you can. So there's there's really no restriction. On Facebook, I think you shouldn't post 10 times a day, because <laughs> that could be really irritating to the ones who like the page. But on Twitter, it's natural that there's a lot of tweets. So if you have something to post, it's great. But on the other hand, you don't have to stress it post every day. So when you have something to say, so it's OK to post only on events, if that's, that's when you have something to say. But, but then, on the other hand, if the account has been inactive in the organization, so it's not good either. So you kind of have to find the balance. What's, and what's beneficial for you, of course. You shouldn't put an effort in something that really plays a role, doesn't reach anyone. But in the, in the beginning, when you start using a new tool, you can't think that on the first day you should, OK, it's weird. Uh, but, but you shouldn't think on the first day 
new channel that you should reach thousands of people because it doesn't work that way. You have to build your follower base. But it doesn't if it doesn't work, you don't get people to follow your account. Then then I understand if, if you don't want to post, if, if no one sees the tweet, then there's really no point. I understand that too. It depends if the target group is in that channel we're talking about. Yep. I think like we know that we are now experts in this, but I mean, I think what other is when you start a new account, and of course, that we have to have a nice, like a good description, also like what mm -hmm. your organization is about and everything what you work with. And if you then start to look what you can follow, like what, who, what other organizations are in the field or other, I don't know, politicians or whatever, and then yeah. start with this, and then often, I'm, I'm sometimes surprised that what kind of people follow us because there's not so much happening, but we can follow like a lot of different organizations. Somehow you follow others and interact with them. We don't really comment on something either, but it's one. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's And I know many people, when, when you think that uh, you want to have followers, otherwise there's no point in posting really. So so you, you should go follow the people who you want to follow your account, exactly. So so you, you can then grow the basis from day one on. Absolutely really irritating if you start doing this that you follow and you unfollow and you follow and you unfollow. I know various persons from Finland who do that every day because I, I, I admin like 20 Twitter accounts. So so if I see on every account that the same person follows and follows, you know, to get the other person to follow and notice that follows, it's really irritating. And in many, you know, because I, I have a lot of training, so it's often this one person who gets noticed, but it's that guy does that to all accounts. He wants everyone to follow him and you follow and unfollow it. You just seem stupid. Right. Like you're trying to be noticed so much that it's it's stupid. You should have good content to be noticed and to be to be so that someone would be interested. But that's not the way to to gain a good follower there basis. Some, there are some kind of people that options and you can buy like that. Did you get at some point you see the person who had Yeah, and it, it's it's stupid. Everyone can see who follows you, and it's, it's if it's empty accounts, what's the point? You know, some some companies do. They have like thousands of accounts, and, and they sell that those accounts would come follow you. So that I see no point in this. Those are no real people. That's not point. Okay, the numbers look good, but but they're not real. So that's that's always. And I think it's getting uh, a huge challenge because uh, it's an army of things. That's true. There's one specific country where there are a lot of trolls from in Finland. It takes For a lot example, time to block all of them because yeah. they are getting it very young. Especially now in the elections, there are a couple of Finnish speaking accounts that really are not Finnish. And you can totally see it. And those are really annoying. I get like every day follow and follow from this one. It was Kuntavalit. Which is presidential elections and then finish. So that's kind of interesting propaganda, so to say. To, to you. I think they will, if, if they can. It is, of course, it's difficult when it's in different languages and, and so it can be. Do they have the location offices uh, in country where that? Yeah. Are they located only in the United States? They have an office in Denmark, and there's one Finnish speaking person working. They have contact with him, so so he's he's the only from, one from Twitter who follows the Finnish speaking discussions. So that's kind of advertising not to follow discussions for the real. So that's that's also with Facebook. They can't find everyone who's breaking the rules because. Well, unless you are not reported. Yeah, when you report, they start acting. If if a lot of people re report something as misleading or or not not some appropriate, so. But hey, let's go to LinkedIn. We have a uh, bit material. We have no time left, but I'll go through something, and you can keep on discussing then later on. 
Uh, well, I want to talk about networking. If we don't talk about anything else, it's okay. Which ones of you are, are doing networking online? Are you getting to know people online? Yeah? Yeah? I think it's amazing nowadays because, you know, I, I've learned people via Twitter, especially, especially people from my field, the other ones who work with these topics. And, and it's so cool when you then meet these people at events and like, oh, hi, what's going on? And you kind of know the person even though you never met in real life. And, and this is getting more and more natural all the time. Uh, yeah, we used to used to collect, you get the business card, you usually add the people to your LinkedIn network and you, you kind of start sharing and, and communicating with them. But the point is, this is becoming more natural since you know real life, not only in, in, in work life. You know Tinder? Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah? The dating app? to date online anymore because I think everyone at our office who is single is, is using it all the time you know you get peeps from there and there and you're like oh at this time of the day so you know when people get used to dating online they, they will be used to meeting people professionally or online also so 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 how we act online is, is changing all the time with, with this with this at the same time and uh, at the same time we get uh, the information from our own field, from this network that we build online. The point is you have to find the people who are interesting to you and start discussing with them. But then uh, when you have a network, you can have many benefits. Because the people you're, you're uh, connected to probably talk about the same field or somehow about the topics they might be interested in. And, and you get to know the things that you probably should have known about. That's the biggest benefit for me, that I have a network who will raise up the questions I should have known already from Finland and abroad. So that's, that's the big thing. And that's really beneficial for your working life because you can develop yourself and, and be active instead of kind of waiting to read it in a magazine or, or somewhere. Uh, this is the big thing. And I think we could, we could even end with this one. It's important to participate in these professional channels. I will give you the presentation, share the link, so you can check out what I had from LinkedIn. It's the important uh, for professional networking. You can continue for maybe five minutes if oh. you want your important things to say. So we'll Okay, continue. well then it's okay, but read this one first. <laughs> Someone's laughing already, so you're probably read. <laughs> yes, so that's why we, all of us as professionals, should be online. Because nowadays it's not uh, only about what you have achieved, but if someone knows and sees and trusts that you have achieved something. And, and the world is going towards this direction all the time. So LinkedIn is the most important channel when it comes to business and professional networking. And worldwide, millions of users. In Europe, 92 millions of users. In Finland, the exact number is 773,000 at this moment. So a lot of professionals online. Because, you know, it's mostly people who work with, with computers, so to say. It's, it's not the pro productive work. No, not productive. That's not the correct word. Like uh, the work that happens in, in factories. The ones working there do not probably use LinkedIn, but it's the specialists in their own fields that are active. So if you want to uh, link, be linked and be connected with those people, LinkedIn is the, the most important one to use. Here we have this uh, one statistics I had. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have all the countries, but here you can compare a little how LinkedIn <laughs> is used in, in other countries uh, compared to how many people use internet in general. The, uh, the interesting thing here, yeah, Finland is 30, 30%, US 37%, for example, Germany 5%. For example, in Germany, uh, LinkedIn isn't used. They have this other channel that is more important in, in professional connections. So, so of course, if one country has their own kind of system, own service already, uh, they probably won't be online. But I know that many Germans for 
France will do any anything international, they they will be on it because that's the way to to reach reach their connections. But then the most important thing is that everyone expects like Facebook. It's Facebook but professional. You can tell what's going on at work, but not what's going going on with your cat, <laughs> like we talked earlier. And and you should do it. This is one of the discussions. You can see these quite often in the newsfeed when, when someone starts saying that do not post those things here. It's it's sometimes people just log in and start using it as Facebook. So so probably those people haven't been been getting to know LinkedIn that well. The point is, it's more than just a CV. It's, it's, uh, if you only put your kind of work history and where you work now, what project you've done, if you only put that information there, you're not really using LinkedIn as a social channel, of course. It's, then it's only an online CV. And, and the possibility, when, when you build your network, it's really great that you actually can share information you can read information they are sharing. You can follow various companies and organizations. You can participate in groups. Uh, LinkedIn might be easier for many of us than Twitter because you don't have to restrict yourself to 140 characters. You can have kind of bit more meaningful discussions often in those groups. And also, LinkedIn isn't that that much to the things that happen right now. Sure idea behind the discussion right now. How many of you use LinkedIn? Yeah. The rest of us, the rest should also log in and register and start using. It's, it's really beneficial, I think. The one thing that has made LinkedIn more active in the last half a year or so is blogging on LinkedIn. Because they introduced this new feature that you can publish a blog post in your profile. And it's very handy. Most of us do not want to uh, blog every day. You don't have time. But sometimes you have something to say. You want to some professional discussion and, and take a, 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 some topic up. So, so blog on LinkedIn is, is quite handy. You don't have to blog every week. It's, it's normal that it's only sometimes. But for me, it's difficult to blog on link, LinkedIn because I blog in our company blog very often, so I don't, you know, I don't want to put a copy of the same blog there. I've done it once and it, it looked stupid, and now I'm kind of, I don't want to have, have it there anymore because it's, it's just a duplicate. So, so you know, you have to find the role for your use, also for this, this channel. This is how it looks like. You have the photo, you can share a text, and you can also all the insights, how many people have seen the blog, etc. Groups, really good for internal, internal use. Have you used professional? Yeah, yeah, good. Because that's a good way. Uh, many people do not want to have a, like a Facebook group where you do work-related stuff because if, if they don't want to have, have any anything to, anything professional on Facebook. So it's a good way to, to move to LinkedIn. It's, it's more natural for many of us. And then pages, always for external communications. Look like this. Are you using one? Yeah, yeah. That's our page. You can see the yellow part, which is only for the admins, where you post post the actually messages you have there. But you you gain followers and so on. Yeah. Yeah. UBC doesn't use LinkedIn. I mean, UBC as the general doesn't use yeah. LinkedIn or, or Twitter only Facebook. So that's why my question is, what would like, for example, a member city and then UBC as a whole organization, what would be the most important thing for us to do in LinkedIn, what would be most beneficial to us? I think the group where you share information is the best part. Because the problem is also, um, yeah, yeah, it could be difficult. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> it should be discussed a bit further. further but, but, but you could have a page. Yeah. For
absolutely. I think I think you should try that that cool absolutely. No, it's very easy and I mean we are big on it, it's kind of available you just need to kind of how you want it. I think it works really well. Yeah. You get excited to remember that you can decide how often you get those yeah, in yeah, emails because that's, that's really annoying that they send every day during the beginning when you log in. If there's something posted in the groups, yeah, yeah, once a week is a good way. For example, because I, I remember in the beginning I joined many groups, and I think many people do that. You, you choose, and then you start having like ten daily updates on the discussions in those in those international groups you've joined. So, so then be horrible again. But that's that's the important thing. Another thing, one more under the pages, you can nowadays have show, showcase. So, for example, you could have main organization and other brands or pages underneath it if, if you kind of want to separate the various topics, etc. So, they have made it for like a year now. Yeah, that's what I actually wanted to say about LinkedIn, to put it shortly. Any questions at this thing? And you can always tweet or, or write on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer. Yeah, please ask how that thing lies here so you have a perfect opportunity to ask something that's really concerning. No, but, but I think the point is you ask questions on the way and I, it's it's really good. Thank you for that because I think, think we had a better discussion then and not only talking alone here <laughs> about something I thought might interest you. So I hope this was a beneficial morning and you will have a great day. I'm now on pause. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Vina. I'm sure it was very beneficial for, for as an EBC point of view, but also for member cities and, and, and so on. So I think thank you very much. Thank you. So now a bit something about how we're continuing today. Uh, in the program it says workshop, so it doesn't mean that we're going to do the workshop all together now. It's like as a you know, non-stop session, but it's more like I'm going to do an intro intro now first to the external communications. I'm hoping maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> Let's see how I go. <laughs> Will I be having words or not? But then after that, when I've done the intro, uh, and please ask questions during the intro as well. I don't mean it that I'm as a talking head here in front of you, but because it's UBC, things that and many people are here as new to UBC as an organization. So I really want to know what you want to ask me and, and about UBC. So, so do comment and ask questions. But after the intro, we'll have a five-minute technical break because we're doing a learning cafe next after that. So we're going to divide us into groups. Again, workshopping. So, so that's what we're going to do. Let's start with the intro first. And then we'll break for lunch a bit later. So uh, there's still bread over there. So, so please take some more coffee if you like. And I, I don't bother if you, if you move around during the intro and, and get some more coffee and bread if you like. Yeah, so basically, um, what has already been mentioned yesterday by, by many many people already, Arko Virvan and Vice Mayor Turku and the Vice President of UBC, in, in, in his speech, uh, we have a UBC communications and marketing strategy, and you all have that in your memory sticks, which you received in your, your packs yesterday. And also on those memory sticks, there are other documents from this seminar that you can use often and see what's in there. And, and especially get yourselves acquainted with the uh, communications and marketing strategy. Because something that's something that's all our communications and marketing work at the moment is based. So, so please do that. And also all the uh, guidelines for the new commissions, how to proceed with communications and marketing and and then information about the communications network, which I know many members are here at the moment. Uh, so, so do acquaint yourselves with that as well. Uh, UBC's brand promise and core message. So, so basically, what we, what we want to say, what we 
organization in, in Brandwise is that we are the leading network, leading city network in Northern Europe. And, and, and we work to foster sustainable, smart and safe cities. And these, of course, are, are something that we position to macro trends of, of urbanization and then also macro regional development. And, and we also discussed these, especially in the panel, panel section yesterday, a lot. Uh, we've been also uh, talking a lot about target audiences in this seminar. So, so we know that they are, they are important, but it's, it's, it's kind of hard because we have so many target audiences. So, so sometimes to choose what is the most important one. But as for external communications in UBC, um, we have many stakeholders. We have politicians, civil servants, youth groups, so on, different actors, and then strategic partners such as Boltnet, BDF, CBSS, other city networks. So we have a lot of different different target audiences in external communication, less in internal. But uh, so focusing to these is is kind of a issue for us because we have to choose how to target our messages. Uh, some values you be is reliable, very professional, future oriented. I'm sure these all sound good to everybody. That's what we want to be like. But the themes um, to prioritize and use in all communications and marketing, they refer to what I just said about the UBC's uh, brand, brand the promise and the core message that we have, that we are a sustainable city, we a smart city. So these themes are in a way reflected in, in all the work we do, in all the commissions as well, even though they may sound so that they connect to more to one commission than another. But actually, if you think about it, they're really enough to cover all the commissions. So, so these should be, these should, should be uh, emphasized in all, in all the, uh, the work we do and the messages we do send out if we want to be consistent with the UBC communications marketing marketing communications and marketing strategy, which we of course want to be. So uh, about little about the aims. I guess uh, it's also about internal awareness, but in, in this stage awareness and cooperation in member cities. So now that we have this because we have a key role also in your member cities to raise awareness of UBC, what UBC is, what UBC does, what your city does in UBC, all the results you've achieved through your through your uh, work in UBC. So, so you're in a you know really really uh, key role in the brand strengthening that way as well. And uh, others, of course, there's lobbying, lobbying to uh, to also help member cities in that way to further all the policies and and so on. And then in general, marketing the Baltic Sea region. So to promote the Baltic Sea region as a, as a whole. And then again, uh, we're now coming to a new general conference next uh, October. So, and there we also have uh, a new strategy being planned. So a new strategy for the whole UBC will be, uh, will be decided on there. And this will also, of course, affect uh, all the uh, all the measures in the forthcoming strategy period also for communications and marketing. So, so there's a big checking phase in that general conference as well, what we're going to do with communications and marketing as well. Yes, so what do we have now in use? So as we all know, we have UBC net. And uh, basically in external communications, it's very important to, uh, to, to develop the uh, external website and the web services that we have. And, and it's important in, in what I think also to uh, not only to outsiders, but also UBC members, and because the intention is to serve our member cities better. So that it's really important to develop the UBC net and the UBC overall brand. Social media, we've talked about quite a lot. I don't know how many of you have uh, visited UBC, like May Facebook. Is there somebody who hasn't? Okay, only a couple. Good. <laughs> so uh, at the moment we have 4,000, no, 400. 4,000 would be great. And um, 53 liking us, and it's been in, in steadily growing the whole time. 
so that's good. No major surges up, but but a steady, steady. And what I always, when I talk to the board members or talk to the presidium and, and other UBC people, I try to talk about the things that Minna has, Minna has talked about this morning, to like UBC, to share, and also as a personal, as a person and not only as an organization. So if you're not liking UBC, the other commissions and so on, and, and sharing and, and connecting, I really encourage you to do this morning. What else do we have? Well, we have the Baltic Cities Bulletin. It's a bit on the way, the mic stand. So the Baltic Cities Bulletin, is there somebody who hasn't seen this at any time and doesn't know the bulletin at all? No, so then it's the your chair. At the moment, the uh, circulation is uh, about 3,700 and basically it goes to member cities, commissions, am I forgetting somebody? No, it's, it's divided to member cities and commissions. And outside. And outside. Yeah. Yeah, so it's also going to EU, EU, EU different governmental levels. So it's also a branding tool, a marketing tool for us, the bulletin. And but I'm I'm also I've been thinking about how to develop it even more. We at the secretaries have been thinking about how to develop it even more into a be a better marketing tool. So that's one question we could then then address in the in the workshop sessions. Then we have press conferences uh, in U, in UBC general conferences, in board meetings, other UBC events. We actually did invite media to come here as well. But uh, since it's the election week in Finland, so it's it's really hard to to get them here. And I know maybe in, it's it's the same all over the uh, the Baltic Sea region. If you send a press release, even though if, if it's like uh, an actual news, it's you're lucky if two two members of the media show up. So so I wasn't really surprised that nobody came. But but anyway, it would have been good. But we have no no news at this stage to to sort of come out with. Which I'm hoping actually that in the general conference we would have something very, very concrete or mind blowing to share with the Baltic Sea region media. I don't know if that's possible, but that's something that I think we should try to do. Okay, um, so what I think um, and I wish that we are going to discuss in the uh, workshops and what I also suggested in the communication strategy is that we shift more from uh, print to web tools and cloud services and so on and social media to be more interactive to be, be more dialogue based and, and also to be cost effective because we already said about the um, <clears throat> about the general conference so so that will be a, a place where we can have a seminar and we definitely will so i'm hoping all of you will definitely attend the general conference and bring all your colleagues as well and but also as i said to attract the media to come there and report on on the event. A big part, we've been talking about the um, renewal consolidation process of the UBC commissions, so a big part is also in the general conference to present these new commissions to the UBC family and to have the commissions tell about their work there and, and sort of uh, come out yeah, as, as a new commission, so, so that's going to be a really big part of October. And uh, second, I think it would be really important to 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 create an, an update for different target groups and how to actually get these get this list done, especially on EU level and, and, and national policy level. So I'm thinking that could be done in cooperation with universities, and we could all all benefit from those information, as well as if we we, and we are now activating the media work, so we could we could actually. Uh, do collaboration in our communications network so that so that we all have these contacts from the media as well from the all around from the Baltic Sea region and we can we can all use them but we just need to have a system on how to, to actually make those contact lists and how they to uh, divide them amongst ourselves. Uh, what is going on in that right at the moment? Uh, a visual renewal 
for, for the UBC. So, so including web, include, including print. So UBC website, the bulletin, and so on. So that's why it's really important that before nothing has decided upon yet, that's one reason why we're having this seminar is to hear your views and, and opinions and, and, and your knowledge and, and everything you can bring from your cities to, to see how we could continue with this and, and, and develop the whole UBC communications and marketing. So nothing has been decided on yet. But we're thinking about uh, doing the whole UBC visual renewal. And, and therefore, when we have the new commission, it's really important that you not put too many efforts, too many money mainly at this stage to the, for example, visuality and so on of the, of the new commission. Because if UBC whole and, and everything, even the logo might, might become refreshed into a new version. So it's really important that you do not put too many, too many stakes at this stage in your new commission's visuality and, and, and layout and, and web pages in, in the sense that because the new UBC look will then need to expand the visual unity. And that's also a really big question. Visual unity also in logos, probably. Visual unity in uh, typographical guidelines so so we would do this whole kind of brand renewal process and it would come to cover the whole UBC so that's why this is a important point to say to you so that when and if if the renewal comes we don't have commission saying but we've now put 20,000 euros or that's a lot but but something like that to to do this commission this and that and, and then we have a problem uh, also, external newsletter is, is on the agenda, maybe. And, and then, of course, extending activity in social media, so as we discussed this morning. Uh, independent platform is what I think would be the most beneficial solution for the whole UBC, for the, for the future of the UBC, and, and just as in, in being able to update and, and have it have it like run from anywhere in the world as well. And Drupal is one option. It's an open source code system. That's so what's uh, one of my goals for this workshop session today is also to find among you maybe three to five persons, if there's more interested, of course, who would be uh, willing to take the web working. So we'd have a working group that could start like, I don't know, not right after this seminar, but already in this spring to work on, on the UBC net and, and, and so on. And, and then, you know, and I will, if nobody <laughs> says their name today, I'm sure to contact you later and <laughs> try to get you involved. So, then very shortly about the options I just mentioned. I hope I wasn't standing in front of my presentation the whole time. <laughs> Good. So, Drupal, maybe some, some of you already know it's very widely used, for example, with NASA, the White House, a lot of Finnish actors and so on. So it's, it's, a, it's a really reliable and, and well-known system. It's based on open source management. This is just an example, a very, very rough example on what the new pages could look like. So I don't want you to get, to get like too, too caught up in, okay, that's all wrong and that's all wrong tools and so on, because this is just something very preliminary that one ages us. But then you can maybe see that, that uh, what the difference could be and, and how the layout can look and so on. And also when we're doing this, if we're doing this, it would be to have responsive web pages, to be mobile friendly, so that in nowadays world is it's pretty much compulsory, and at the moment we don't have, well, not compulsory, but but very many cities and, and other actors and organizations are really working towards getting mobile-friendly web pages, and I think that's something that we need to do as all possible. So it's same content on all channels, on all all devices. So it's just it's just scales. No no matter what what tool you're using, it scales to the right information. No different information platforms, but the same one in, in different different tools. And then with Drupal, there's also a possibility to build an intranet. So 
So that's also something that is being discussed this afternoon about your experiences in, in your cities and the benefits for your city because the internet would be something that we are doing for, especially for the for the member cities because we want you to get easily. So so this is something that is going to be discussed today as well. So that was my interest. So uh, now we would have the technical break, uh, five minutes, and then we'll have the uh, workshop part and we'll probably finish, I hope, a bit later than 12.45. So the latest will be at lunch at one. So, so we have the technical break, five minutes now, and, and then continue with the workshop. <laughs>